WTI, Brent crude and natural gas are all coming off their fifth straight positive day, even as Chinese demand concerns weigh, at least they do in the session now, but could ramping tensions in the Middle East as Iran and Hezbollah promise retaliation against Israel. And Ukraine's surprise Russian offensive offset this downward pressure. Joining me to discuss Fred Kemp, Atlantic Council president, CEO, and a CNBC contributor, and Halima Croft, RBC Capital Markets global head of commodity strategy and also a contributor. Welcome to you both. Really appreciate your time and, and a lot to cover. Um, Fred, where, where would you focus our attention um, right now in terms of maybe where the oil market is concerned at least? Well, look, first of all, we've been talking this whole year about this being uh, 2024, the year of the greatest geopolitical challenges, um, maybe uh, of the last uh, couple of decades, if not our lifetimes, uh, with war in the Middle East, war in Europe, and tensions with China. So the overall geopolitical tensions are always going to have impact on, on energy. Um, you now have Western reporters having gone into Russia this was the first invasion of Russian territory since World War II. The Ukrainians have now uh, uh, taken 390 square miles in Russia. Uh, photographs from the border posting show they had a pretty easy way in. It's humiliating for Russia. Halima can talk more about this than I can, but uh, the gas supply node, Suja, right where they crossed is, is where the, the gas has been coming in. 15% of Europe's gas still comes through that node. Um, but it hasn't been disrupted in two and a half years of war. There's no reason to think it would be now. But, of course, the action is much closer to that position than it ever has been before. And, and Halima, are we right to sort of think, you know, Russia conflict escalates, nat gas premium? You know, you, uh, uh, Israel, Iran as situation escalates, oil premium. And all of that said, there doesn't seem to be much of a premium built into either one here. I mean, Kelly, what's so interesting is we are two years into the Russia-Ukraine war. We have the conflict raging in the Middle East, and yet we've had pretty minimal supply disruptions. And that's why, you know, the oil market had largely faded the Middle East war risk and was focusing more on issues about Chinese demand, recession concerns last week. And now we are closely watching whether this latest diplomatic push by the Biden administration into the Middle East will avert a broader conflict as we brace for Iran and Hezbollah retaliation to the Israeli strikes in Lebanon and Iran just a few weeks ago. So we are still watching the geopolitical situation very closely, but oil market participants and, frankly, gas market participants are having to weigh up some of the economic data versus the supply risk data. And, Fred, it, the, the relatively low geopolitical kind of risk premium across the, the commodities complex comes at a time when we get headlines, as I'm sure you've seen in the Financial Times, about how uh, Russia could has trained its navy for war game scenarios that would use nuclear-capable missiles to target sites deep inside of Europe. So as we look at Ukraine's gains and, and think about the potential responses, it only seems escalatory. Well, I mean, that's the danger right now. You had Phil Zellico, a very smart uh, uh, diplomat scholar, saying that there's now a 20 percent to 30 percent chance of world war in the next couple of years. Now, that's still not 70, 80 percent, but I don't want, I don't like those odds. Uh, and you have uh, Iran uh, looking at uh, assassination on its territory of the Hamas leader a couple of weeks ago, same time as the Hezbollah commander was killed in Lebanon. Iran's got to respond, but Iran's been fighting a shadow war that has been paying off from its standpoint. Does it really want to go into direct conflict with Israel? But what you're pointing to, uh, Kelly, is you have tension in the Middle East with Iran. You have tension with Putin p potentially having to do something to answer this incursion of his territory. So the risk has gone up. It's interesting that the risk premium in markets have not. Uh, but whoever gets elected president of the United States in November... The biggest thing they're going to be facing are these multiple risks in multiple places with a closer coalition, an axis of authoritarians working together, China, right. Russia, North Korea, Iran, than we've seen since the early years of the Cold War and the years just before uh, World War II. And both of those situations were, were uh, settled by, uh, number one, the U.S. coming into World War II in 1941. And then in 1962, a Cuban Missile Crisis almost brought us to nuclear blows with the, mm -hmm. with the Soviet Union. So what we have to remember is these situations will not settle themselves, and they'll either get escalatory or de-escalatory, but they aren't going to stay where they are. 